the Money with Secure Money. I'm Rob Hurdy, here with Brian Caranta. Rob, good to see you, as always. Always good to see you. We always have a lot of fun here. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about stuff that's important and timely, right? Yep. We try to do our best job of it. Right? We do. <laughs> you have something here called the hidden tax. I think most people, uh, yeah. most people know what we're talking about. Yeah, know? inflation. But inflation, right? <laughs> it, it, it's a tax that you did not sign up for. You didn't. Nobody voted on it. No. You're paying, well, they probably did by yeah. printing money. Yeah. You know, but uh, they call it the stealth tax. Really? Yeah, they call it the stealth tax. I mean, think about it. I, I mean, look at the numbers here. I mean, first off, inflation's up 8.9 percent. Uh, you know, as of this show here. Uh, you know, cost of flights up 33%, gas 40%. I mean, I've got, I, I, you know, people watching the show here, and I don't know about your Facebook feed, but I'll see a lot of friends taking pictures of the gas pump now because they're shocked. Right. <laughs> you know, I had a friend just posed a picture that had $118 to fill his truck. Yeah. Right? But g gas up 40%, car rentals up 8.5%. Used cars up 35%, energy up 32%. I mean, think about what's happening here to people. I mean, the average household could spend between $3,500 and $5,000 more buying this stuff. Right. You know what's year. interesting, though, yeah. Brian? Everything you listed there, it's either a necessity that you have to have. They're consumer staples. Right. Yeah. Or it's bucket list stuff, the stuff that you work so hard for your entire right. life and the stuff yeah. you dream about doing in retirement. Yeah. And, you know, just watching this, I, I care about this stuff. I love what I do, and I care about this stuff. And Every day you see, you know, the market's volatile, you see costs going up, mm -hmm. and, and really what that means to, to people in the audience is you see retirement dreams being eroded in front of our very eyes, yeah. and people don't even know it yet. Yeah. Their heads are still in the sand. They, they, they are, and they need to wake up because this is, this is not an easy time right now, and this is not the time to keep your head in the sand and kick the can down the road and procrastinate because if you don't make adjustments right now, and you don't evaluate where you're at and what type of positions you're in or understand the risk level that you're taking or how much more your portfolio could potentially go down if the market continues to drop or how this inflation increase is gonna impact your spending. Right. I mean, most people, what we find fundamentally when we plan, I've been planning for you know over 20 years, is they don't have a plan. Right, how they terrifying don't have a is plan. that? So how would somebody know if they don't have a plan, if they can't dictate exactly what their investments do? You don't have to know how they work, but if they can't tell you when they come in mm -hmm. what everything does, would you say that that person has a plan? No, most people don't know how to get their money to start working for them. See, we all saved and accumulated this money so that eventually when you retire, it actually started working for you. Yeah. And 85 to 90% of those people are going to need it to work for them because most people are retiring without pensions. So when you don't have a pension and the only guaranteed source of income you're gonna have is Social Security, most people are gonna rely on those retirement savings to generate additional income. So they're just waiting on their financial advisor to, to save them. If he's well, not the calling financial you, advisor, you know what they tell them, Rob? They tell them, just, just pull the money out of the account. So they keep all their money in, in one bucket, right? And, they, and, and, and they, it's all in the market. And they hope and pray that the market's going to continue to cooperate. And when they call their advisor and, and, and they say, you know, I'm really worried. We're continuing to take money out of this. And, and the advisor says, you know, don't worry about it. Everything's going to be fine. Keep doing it. But, Rob, I meet people every single year that are running out of money. I meet these folks. And I'll tell you, the worst day of retirement, is not the day you run out. The worst day of retirement is when you, the day you figure out you're going to run out of money and there's nothing you can do it's to stop. It's got to be heartbreaking. It's, it's heartbreaking for people. You told me a stat before between segments here, and it was, I think, with a 6% inflation rate, yep. your income need doubles every 12 years. Yeah, think so about that. So you think about how long people are living in retirement now. Yeah. And think about if you're on a fixed income, right? Mm -hmm. If your income need right now is $50,000 a year, yep. do you have enough money? to last you when that becomes $100,000 a year that you're having to withdraw from your accounts? That's right. Talk about that. Yeah. Well, when we have inflation, right, things get more and more expensive. And right. normally we have an inflation rate that's reasonable, right? We're seeing accelerated inflation. We might even be seeing stagflation where we've got high, high interest rates, right, high costs, right. but low growth. Right, so that means portfolios are not even gonna keep up with what they need. So how are people going to, when they see their expenses increase, how are they gonna offset those expenses? They're gonna to have to make major cuts. They right. may have to reduce, they may have to sell their homes, go into a, a, a you know, a, a, a lesser mortgage or, or go into an apartment. Or move with family. Or move into fa with family, sell a car and only have one car. I mean, there's gonna be sacrifices that people need to make. And unfortunately, they're not getting the advice on how to mitigate these risks as much as they can. You know, it, we always talk about providing solutions for people that they can do on their own. Yeah. I think the day of the do-it-yourselfer, you, you need to not be a do-it-yourselfer right now. Yeah. It's too, it's too, yeah. it's too hard. Well, look, if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you've got time for your portfolio to recover, that's one thing. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer and you're, you're planning on actually being the one that actually generates the income for your retirement and you've been following some stock journal or some, you know, uh, talking head on TV to get stock advice, you right. might want to think again uh, because that's okay if that's money that you can roll the dice with, but that's 
that's not money that you're going to be able to live off of retirement because you're going to need a lot of things to go right, right in order for it to work. And a lot of people thought for the last 12, 14 years that everything was going right. right. You know, how many people did we know in big tech companies that were making money left over right, big time money? You know, they're not singing the same tune anymore. That's right. You're absolutely right. Thinking, you know, talking about do-it-yourselfers, I like to look at houses. Yeah. And you can tell when somebody had flipped a house and is it do-it-yourselfer. Yeah. It's not the same quality of <laughs> exactly. work. That's right. You can tell when somebody's not a professional. You yeah. probably can tell when somebody's a do-it-yourselfer and they bring their portfolio in. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing, too, is that, you know, not all advisors are created equal, Rob. Right. Not all advisors have the, the extensive uh, training and planning s strategies that, that we do at Secure Money Advisor. I might be a little bit biased, right? But I see the work that's out there. And it, but it's no different than contractors, right? I mean, there's right. good contractors, bad contractors. You go into a kitchen, this guy does this type of work this guy does this type of work doctors doctors are the same way right there's good ones there's bad ones attorneys that's you right. just have to find the one that's that's right for you what what and the, i will say this what i find is that a lot of people have a hard time making a change because they're too worried about the relationship i would say that uh what you know the way that the quality of life and how we experience retirement is way more important than any relationship with any financial advisor that's right i mean that should be a business relationship with the advisor if the advisor is not getting that job done that advisor should be fired period bottom line right you'll fire your house cleaner the guy that mows your yard for doing something wrong yeah if the line's crooked or he misses right. a few spots in the yard <laughs> and that's not even that important right it's not a big deal that's right this is yeah. the most vitally important it's the hardest relationship to break up yeah. it's, it, it, well a lot of people are intimidated by having those conversations you know they're, they're intimidated by it and I'll tell you you know people don't realize that there's only four things that their money can do for them it can either provide them with growth it can provide them with safety it can provide them with income or it can be liquid but it can't do all four at one right. time and too many people keep their money in one bucket Rob well you always talk about your three bucket approach right? I do it, let, let's I know what it is explain to the audience what it is well they're actually they're actually gonna get that three bucket approach and folks if you were to call today the next 10 callers who call in we are gonna give you an opportunity to actually see our uh, our three bucket approach through our right track retirement analysis I want to show you this because nobody is walking you through a strategy like this I hear it from people all the time I wish somebody would have shown me this you know, 10 years ago, Brian, we would have been a lot better off. So for the next 10 callers who call in, we are going to give you a complimentary right track retirement review. All you have to do is call 1-888-382-1298 and scan or scan the QR code. But I want you to not kick the can down the road. This is not a time to procrastinate. This economy is moving quick. You need solutions. You need somebody else looking at what you're doing to make sure that you're not going to put yourself in, in harm's way even more. Remember, losses will hurt you more than gains will help you right now. It really is all about protecting 30, 40 years worth of work and making sure you have what you have. So call that number today and schedule the Right Track Retirement Review. It's 1-888-382-1298 or scan the QR code. See, everybody can tell you how to invest your money. There's not a lot of people out there and a lot of firms that can teach you how to use your money. Most people will also tell you that they're scared. And the reason they're scared is because they're afraid of running out of money. The last thing you want to do is have a really good job and you're into your 60s, retire, and be looking for work again in your late 70s. The average person might say, well, a good portfolio would be a good mix of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. No, 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 no. A good portfolio is all designed around the five key areas, income, taxes, investments, healthcare, and legacy planning. We're not just product pickers here. What we do best here is we build retirement plans. Nine out of 10 people when they walk through the door would ask us, we just wanna know if we're on the right track. And I always say, if you're not on the right track, when would be a good time to know it? Probably now. People you know, can actually see a vision once we start to really build out their plan. This is about you. If you're not getting what you need and you feel that when you walk out of the advisor's office, it's time to get a second opinion. And you can't get a second opinion from the person that gave you the first opinion. The difference at Secure Money Advisors, as a fiduciary firm, we help you manage the risk, build the income, and give you the retirement you dreamed of. Welcome back to On The Money with Secure Money. This is the weekly report. I'm Rob Herding. I'm here with my good friend, Brian Quaranta. Rob, good to see you. We've good been talking about a lot of good stuff here. We always do, man. Yeah. I know you're passionate about this. I am too. I, I am. Yeah. It's, it, they're troubling times right now. It's scary. Yeah. Well, look, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth. My mom and dad worked very hard for their money. And I just want to see people have good advice. And I'm tired of hearing the advice 
of don't worry about it, hang in there, you're in it for the long haul. Right. Because these are just cookie cutter sound bites that are managing emotions, they're not solving problems. So we've been talking about stuff that's a little bit scary, yeah. maybe even a little bit depressing to others. But this one's called We're Making History, so I'm pretty excited about this. Tell yeah. me about it. Yeah. Well, look, with stock market, we're stock market uh, since 1939. We're bond market since 1989. So we're making history in a bad 82, way. 82, I should say. We're stock, uh, bond market since 1982. So in 40 years, we're bond market. In the last 70 years, yeah. we're start to the yeah. equities market. Big time stuff, man. I mean, this is... So it's bad news. I was excited, and it's not, yeah. <laughs> it's not exciting. I thought we were going to talk about something happy, finally. No, no. I mean, you know, look, it's, it's, it's troubling times for America. I mean, you know, think about everything we've gone through with the pandemic. I mean, you know, everything from all the lockdowns and not being able to go anywhere and everybody being isolated and not being able to see family, right? Finally coming out of the pandemic. And now we're dealing with this massive decline in the market and rising inflation. And, you know, I, I mean, it's just, it's, it's tough. Let's talk about the challenges of both equities and fixed income being down at the same time. Because let's, let's, first, let's talk about how that relationship is, is usually and how it usually works and, yeah. and why we design portfolios the way we do or have historically. Yeah, well, you and I always talk about this, about the old-fashioned 60-40 split between right. stocks and bonds. And, and the idea behind that was to use what we would consider non-correlated assets. I mean, bonds are typically non-correlated to stocks. It's so an inverse relationship. It's inverse. So if stocks were going down, bonds would be going up, which was a good thing, right? And that yeah. would offset or mitigate risk. That's called hedging in a portfolio. Right. Most people don't know that. That's hedging risk, okay? But those hedging models are not working right now because you have both asset classes that are non-correlated going down in value. You know, think about it, even cryptocurrency that was supposed to be a non-correlated asset right. is going down in value. So it's, it's very tough right now for portfolio managers to build a portfolio where they have any hedging built in unless they're using some type of option strategy. I wouldn't say they call it a bulletproof strategy, mm -hmm. but, but I think a lot of people thought it was. These are, this is how some of the biggest books on Wall Street are built. They're called parity books. And this is, this is the, it's a very simple concept, right? They're hedging with bonds against the stocks. If stocks started to do poorly, they put more money in the bonds, and that's how they prevent the portfolio. But when you have both of them going down at the same time, it's, it, it becomes very difficult for these portfolio managers to manage the risk. So you and I were looking at some of the long-term bond portfolio yep. returns, yep. and they're down 8% to 14 15%. It's not just small losses they're having on that yeah. side. Most people think, oh, it's just a small loss I'll take on that side, that, that safe side. Yeah, how but about, it's not. How about the 20-year treasury bond? That's down almost 20%. Oh a 20 year treasury. If I came to you as advisor and said, you know, I think I'm, what we want to do is protect some of your money, we'll put it in a 20 year treasury, would you have ever thought that you would lose double digit returns on no. that? No. It, if you actually have, own the treasury, you can keep it until duration. That's and right. And get your money back. That's but you're right. losing money safely because of inflation, Correct. right? Yeah. So, what's the other option with a bond fund? You don't have that same luxury, do you, of just holding on? No, you don't. That, that's the problem with a bond fund. And this is where most people typically have bonds, is within the bond funds. They're a different animal than a traditional single purchase bond, right? Because if I hold a bond till it's maturity, I get my, I get my right. original amount back. That doesn't work in a bond fund. There could be losses. You don't control that maturity on those bonds. Bond funds are created for the masses, the peasants, right? Because yeah, wealthy people, they have individual line item bonds. They have line item bonds, right. that's right. They don't buy bond funds. No, no, no. The only person that buys the bond fund is you know your everyday worker that's investing in a 401k plan or your everyday mom and pop that's going to a brokerage firm or whatever and they're putting them into some type of bond mutual fund that's so right so with a 60 40 split or that inverse relationship when the equities went one way we would run the other direction for mm -hmm. safety yep. what does somebody do today well you got to think about alternatives you got to think about alternatives that are not correlated to the market right i mean some of these things that are not correlated to the market are things that have uh, option strategies built into them that are hedged to where we can get upside potential with no downside risk. Right. And these are places that you need to go. People don't realize there's other ways to hedge other than just this stock bond mix. We can do it through options investing too. And that is a very unique approach in hedging and it works very well, especially during volatile times like this. Well, people don't also understand that you can make money when the market goes down. It's called shorting the market. Right. Right. And so people just aren't open to these things because they're usually working with very plain vanilla accounts. Uh, and they don't have that sophistication because they're they just not seeing the right people. We, we always talk about how not all financial advisors are created equal, yeah. right? Yep. And we always talk about how there's three phases of retirement, accumulation when you're young and you're yeah. saving money and, and right. socking it away and you can, you can afford a loss or two, right, along the way. Then you get in that preservation stage, that retirement red zone where you're mm -hmm. three to five years out from retirement. Yep. And what's the goal there? You just want to want to protect it, right? You want to preserve, right? Our clients are more concerned about the return of their money rather than the return on right. their money. Okay. It, that that's the most important thing in retirement. Okay? Right. It's the most important thing is that you provide yourself with a stream of income 
the and distribution you, phase, which is the last phase, the is what you're discussing phase, right now. Distribution phase, that's right. We got accumulation, preservation, distribution, right? Very important to Not understand. Not all financial advisors are good at those. Most financial advisors continue to focus, even in retirement, they're using accumulation strategies in retirement. You know, when I is see it because this- because they don't know or don't have the tools? What is it? What causes it? I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, you know, you know, being in this business, growing up in this business, I mean, I was, you know, 22 years old when I got started in this business. I'm 46 now, right? Right. I've seen a lot over the years, but it's the training in the industry. The industry has a certain philosophy that it likes to follow, especially at the big box firms, right? Yeah. There's, there's a specific model and you've got to follow that model. And, you know, your, your manager at the end of the week is going to ask you about how much XYZ you recommended. Working with a fiduciary firm and you'll see most guys are trying to move out of the big box firms because they don't want to they don't have to come to the table with right. an agenda anymore but working with a fiduciary we have to do what's in your best interest and we don't have a, we don't we're not loyal or beholden to any specific company well what you just said fiduciary and being beholden to the client not some company these people that are at these big box firms the retail firms that are on every corner what most people don't understand is the majority of them are brokers right that's right and a broker gets paid a commission no matter what they sell that's right so they want to they want as many transactions as possible that's right and there's a there's a few problems with that because you don't know if a, a change is being made if it's being made in your best interest or it's being made just to tra transact a commission right the other thing is this uh, brokers can't actively move often. Like our portfolios have moved often over the last few months as the markets have changed. If a, if a broker does that, he could get charged with churning. So this is a lot of times why they say, don't worry about it, hang in there, you're in it for a while. Just hold on. Because they're, 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 they're handcuffed as far as what they can do as far as that activity. Because if there's too much trading or too much activity, that's called churning, they get, they get themselves in trouble for that. When my mom retired, she said to me, this stuff is confusing. And I could see somebody in the audience we don't have a lot of experience with this, right? You say you put money in a way in a 401k, it's out of mind, out of sight, or backwards, out of sight, out of mind. And uh, what would somebody do today to know? I mean, how would somebody really know? What well, they do? don't need to be confused anymore, folks. And I don't want you to be confused. I want you to take advantage of our Right Track Retirement Review. It truly is designed to help you understand what retirement is, how to properly position your retirement assets, and make things simple and easy to understand. And it will give you, most importantly, peace of mind. So for the next 10 callers who call in right now, we're going to give you a complimentary Right Track Retirement Review at no cost. No obligation. All you got to do is call 1-888-382-1298. Again, that's 1-888-382-1298 or scan the QR code at the bottom. See, everybody can tell you how to invest your money. There's not a lot of people out there and a lot of firms that can teach you how to use your money. Most people will also tell you that they're scared. And the reason they're scared is because they're afraid of running out of money. The last thing you want to do is have a really good job and you're into your 60s, retire, and be looking for work again in your late 70s. The average person might say, well, a good portfolio would be a good mix of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. No, 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 no. A good portfolio is all designed around the five key areas, income, taxes, investments, healthcare, and legacy planning. We're not just product pickers here. What we do best here is we build retirement plans. Nine out of 10 people, when they walk through the door, would ask us, we just want to know if we're on the right track. And I always say, if you're not on the right track, when would be a good time to know it? Probably now. People you know, can actually see a vision once we start to really build out their plan. This is about you. If you're not getting what you need and you feel that when you walk out of the advisor's office, it's time to get a second opinion. And you can't get a second opinion from the person that gave you the first opinion. The difference at Secure Money Advisors, as a fiduciary firm, we help you manage the risk, build the income, and give you the retirement you dreamed of. Welcome back to On the Money with Secure Money Weekly Report. I'm Rob Hertig. Brian Caranta. Good to see you, Rob. Good to see you, man. We're having fun. We talked about this perfect storm yeah. of things that are happening in the, the market yep. that could really cause problems for those that are either on the cusp of retirement or in retirement. Yeah. And yeah, you've got a lot converging right now. We do. We, I mean, a lot converging. Something we've really never seen before. It's it's scary. It's terrifying. For yep. those that aren't awake yet, you know, I and, almost want to reach through the screen. And tell and them to wake up. Just shake them. <laughs> wake up. Yeah. You remember yeah. Indiana Jones where he right. drank the blood and yeah. the, kid, the kid had to burn him with a stick <laughs> right, to get yeah. him to come back to, to, to reality? Right, right. I mean, we need a stick. We need a lot of them. We need 
I need to burn some people here uh, <laughs> and, and bring them back, wake them up. Well, you know, people just kind of, when times get tough like this, they, they, they tend to not want to face reality and they stick their head in the sand. You know, you'll hear people say, I don't even want to go to the mailbox and open up my statements. That, that, you, you cannot be that way during times like this. This is not a time to procrastinate. This is not a time to kick the can down the road. Yeah. This is a time to actually figure out what adjustments need to be made so that you don't have to, if you're getting ready to retire in the next couple of years, why would you want to ever put yourself in a position to where you may have to delay retirement five to 10 years? Because, you know, you go back to when the uh, tech bubble burst in, yeah. you know, it took like 16 years for people to make some of that money back. Wow. 16 years. It's a you long know, time. Yeah, ask yourself, somebody watching today, do they have 16 years to wait to recover? How, what's the average length of retirement? I mean, it's, that's got to be the majority of it, right? Well, re the length of retirement now is continuing to increase. That's one of the biggest problems and challenges that we have is that people are living longer and they're spending more time in retirement. You know, so ARP said that you could spend more time in retirement than you actually did working. Right. Think about that. Yeah. You know, and that's a, that's a lot of time. You think about the monumental task there where you've got you've been accumulating money for, you know, 30 or 35 years and now you need to live off of it for 30 right. years. Remember the Time magazine <laughs> cover that says the first person to live to 150 has been born. Yeah, right. I mean, if yes. that's the case, you are going to spend a lot yeah, of time. Yeah, and retirement. Hallmark did sell the most 100-year-old birthday cards last year. Did they? Yep. A lot more centenarians, right? Yes, yes. That's interesting. So we talked about all these things working together, and now mm -hmm. we're going to talk about it more on a granular level. And I think we're going to talk about the legislative risk here. And yeah. you, you called it the greatest trick ever played here. The greatest trick ever played, yeah. Revenue Act of 1978, right? This is when, this is when basically they said that they were going to create this thing called the 401k plan, right. okay? And the 401k plan originally was just structured for um, high, highly compensated uh, executives executives to defer uh, uh, bonuses and stock options. That's right. what it was designed to do. But the employers saw it as a chance to take the responsibility of retirement, which was expensive, yes. right? Yeah. And put it off, take them from their shoulders and put it on yours. Let's talk about how retirement looked prior to that because it was pretty good. Nobody failed. You had to be really terrible at retirement back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, even up to the 80s well, that, to, to fail. That's right, because we had pensions, right? right? We, we had pensions and when you retired, you had a social security check and you had a pension check and that was more than enough for people to live off of. And the way that they offset the cost Cost, cost increasing right. was they would go to the bank and they would buy a CD because back then CDs were paying between 12 and 15 percent. There was no reason to take risk with your money. Why was, would you? It, and right. you can prove that point. Look at the volume of the stock market prior to 1978. It was non-existent. That's right. Yeah. Well, if you look at when the when the 401k was put into place, I mean, the, the, the amount of money that went into the stock market in the mutual funds, it was like a hockey stick. It, goes it just went roof. straight up. What you mentioned about retirement prior to that, where you worked at the same place forever, I think people in the Pittsburgh community can really identify with that because of all the steel mills and, and yeah. things around here. You worked at the same place forever. Mm -hmm. When you were done, they had a big party for you. They made you a cake and you walked out with a gold watch and every two weeks you got a check. That's right. So why did we abandon that way of retirement? Why did we abandon something that was so good and worked so much of the time? Yeah. Well, employers saw it as a way to actually get rid of that legacy cost. It was a lot cheaper for them to provide a 401k plan and rather than providing a pension for the rest of their life, they basically say, hey, Rob, when you retire, you can take all this money and you can figure out how to generate that income for the rest of your life. The problem is this, most 401ks are invested in the market, okay? Right. Which is completely fine during your accumulation years. But you cannot use, once you get to that point to where you're getting ready to retire, those same strategies and techniques that you use to accumulate your money, they're not the same strategies and techniques that you can use to actually distribute your money when you need income. And people have never been taught how to properly build Build a retirement plan. A lot of people are retiring with investments, and investments go it's just up like a and collection. down. They're like an art collector. They don't even know what their stuff does. They don't right? even know what stuff does. When they does. come in, can they verbalize what it does for them? No. No, most people cannot. Yeah, they, most people don't know how to take everything that they've earned and actually get it to start working for them, and to get it start, to start working in a way where if the markets became volatile, just like they are now, they don't have to worry. You know, the way we've structured our clients, we're not worried about the market volatility because we've carved enough off to create and protect at least the first 15 to 20 years of retirement, so that any money that we do have at risk, Rob, we have the ability to right. actually have a longer time horizon on that money. That's smart. So. So what we've talked about is a dirty trick, but it's not even the worst part of it. No. So we talked about the, the, the responsibility being shifted from the employer to the employee, right? That's Which right. is a dirty trick, right? Yeah, it That's is. That's why there's no loyalty anymore. It's why people have 20 jobs over a career. Yes, right. What's the dirtiest trick of all? Because this, yeah. What, well, the dirtiest trick at all was the fact that when you made a contribution to your 401k, so let's say you made a $20,000 contribution, 
you're, you're allowed to take that off your gross income, right? So if you made $100,000 a year and you made a, 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 a contribution of $20,000, that means you only had to pay taxes on $80,000, okay? So that was, that was it. So it was, gonna, it was gonna reduce your taxes, but when that $20,000 went into that 401k, it was gonna grow tax deferred. So if that 20,000 went from 20,000 to 500,000 to a million, that sounds great, but when you pull all of that money out, every dollar you pull out, is you're gonna to have to pay taxes on it. And the reason it's the dirtiest trick is because they can change the rules in the middle of the game on how much you pay in taxes. We don't even know what they are. And you look, we, taxes have been on sale. Look at a chart of federal tax rates yep. over history. That's right. Taxes have been on sale for the last 40 years, and now we printed all this massive amount of debt. Yeah. Guys, draw your own conclusion with what you think is going yeah, to happen. Yeah, you think happen. taxes are going up or down in the future. Right. Right. And we, you know, we're talking about taxes here, and we're talking about there are ways you can mitigate this while you're working still, mm -hmm. and even into retirement, right? Yeah. And we always give people ways to do things on their own. And, you know, other than becoming a CPA or a tax attorney, what can somebody do to fix this on their own? Well, our right track retirement system was all built around fixing these problems yeah. because I saw these problems from the minute I got into the business. Remember, I got in, in right at the end of 1999. Yeah. So I saw all these losses happen. I said, this is no way for people to retire. This is really gambling. And I've always thought to myself, boy, when you've won the game, when you've had enough, when you've saved enough money, why do you continue to roll the dice and take risk with it? Because they're taking advice from people that get paid a fee or commission to take risk with their money. It's really easy to tell somebody else to take risk with their money, especially to get paid a fee or commission to do it. This is not a time to be a do-it-yourself or, or have a financial advisor where you haven't double-checked their work in four or five years, correct? That's right. That's right. And folks, I really want you to take advantage of this right track retirement review. We're going to do a full analysis on your current portfolio. We're going to go over five key areas. We're going to look at your income. We're going to look at your taxes. We're going to look at your investment structure. We'll talk about how to protect yourself from a healthcare event. And then most importantly, when the good Lord decides to take you home, we'll show you how to make your family and your charities the largest beneficiaries of your money and not the IRS. This is something you absolutely have to take advantage of. This is not the time to procrastinate or kick the can down the road. Take action on this and schedule the appointment. There's no cost. There's no obligation. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call 1-888-382-1298 or scan the QR code.